Hello and welcome to the Church of St John the Evangelist here on a rather dreary Saturday morning. This church in Sidcup in South East London. My name is Mark and I'm the organist and director of music at this church. And I have to say, I feel very honoured and privileged to be the organist here because I get to preside over a splendid Henry Willis organ in this church. And in today's video, I'm going to demonstrate the organ and show you what can actually be achieved on it. It's a very fine instrument indeed, and I'm very happy to show it to you today. So, let's go in. side pipes of the organ. There's a group there and there's another group just above the organ console there. Okay well here we are at the console of this lovely Willis organ. As you can see it's uh, three manuals or keyboards if you like and the nameplate is up there Henry Willis 1926. Incidentally, this is not a Father Willis organ, this is a Willis II organ built by his son. But all the building techniques that Father Willis had were passed down to his son and also to his grandson. So all the good building techniques and the voicing of the stops is still here. Okay, so we've got three manuals. I'm going to start with this middle one, which is called the Great. Called that because of the Great and Grand effect. It's got all the loudest stops on it. And to start off with, we have two open diapason eight foots. Eight foot just simply means the organ sounds at concert pitch. So I'm going to start with the number two open diapason and it sounds like this. Now compare this with the number one, which is a bigger sound. of them together. Now we have a four foot principle, and four foot means it sounds an octave above concert pitch. So first of all, I'm gonna leave the number two out and I'm gonna add the four foot principle, and together they sound like this. And now here's the four foot with the number one do open diapason. Now what I will do is I'll put both the diapasons with the forefoot and I'll put some pedal with it and you get this lovely chorus. just for those three stops. Okay, we also have a two foot stop as well, the 15th, which sounds two octaves above concert pitch. So I'm gonna put it with both diapasons, the four foot principle, and we add the 15th, we get this sound. <laughs> We also have a 16 foot V alone. 16 foot is an octave below concert pitch, and if I put that on as well, you'll hear that you get a more full sound. Okay, 
so that's the principles on the grate, but also on the grate we have some flutes. First of all, we have an eight foot tibia. Now this one, I am not sure if that is actually a Willis stop because normally Willis called his eight foot flutes clarabels. I think this could either be a replacement or taken from another organ somewhere. But however, it's on the organ and it sounds something like this. A four foot harmonic flute, which I think is an absolutely adorable stop. And if we put it with a tibia, we get this lovely effect. And in fact, you can even put the 15th with it and it's um, not overpowering. I'll also just play this hymn again. I'll put some pedal in it with it as well. Now, as well as having the eight and four foot flute, we also have a stop here called a twelfth. Uh, twelfth, it's called a two and two thirds, which means it lies halfway between the four foot and the two foot. As you know, the four foot sounds an octave above concert pitch, while a twelfth sounds an octave and a perfect fifth above concert pitch. So here is middle C on the principal. That gives you the treble C, but on the twelfth you get this note. And if you put them both together. And this twelfth, you can use it again with the harmonic flute and the tibia and get a nice effect like this. And you can also use it as a cornet effect. I'm going to just uh, play it with the flutes on the um, choir and you'll get this lovely effect. your corner effect. Okay, we have one more stop here on the grate, which is a big tuba, like a huge big trumpet. It's also extended down here on the choir. You can also play it on this manual as well. And it's a big stop, it goes like this. actually extended down to the pedal trombone and I'm going to just show you how it blends in. I often play it on the choir and use the grate to accompany the tuba with something like this.
Okay, so that's our middle manual, the grate. I'm now going down to the choir manual. The reason it's called a choir, because this was traditionally used, the, the manual used when the organist was accompanying choirs. It's got the softest stops on the organ, and some of them are quite indeed very delicate. So to start off with, we have a stop diapason, which again is like a flute. <laughs> flute which we'll add to it and we also have a two-foot flagellette have as well here on the choir an open diapason although nowhere near as big as the open diapasons on the grate but if we add that to it we get um, again a richer sound again I'll just put some pedal with it two-rank mixture here on the choir. Now mixture is um, a group of pipes, not just normally on most ranks they're just one set of pipes but a mixture contains two or more sets of pipes all connected to the one stop and this is a two-rank mixture. So if I put it with that chorus I just played we get this effect. <laughs> Dulciana 8 foot which is what we call a stringy stop. It's very quiet, to be honest I don't use it that often but it's uh, quite a delicate stop. normally actually used in conjunction with the stop diapason. Now we have one more stop here, well we have the tuba which we talked about earlier but we also have a clarinet and Willis was well known for his clarinets. So our clarinet sounds like this. And I'm just going to play it with the strings on the swell so that you get this sort of effect. Okay, that's our choir. Two down, one manual to go. This is the top manual, which is called the swell. 
Now the reason it's called that is because it's the only manual where you can actually get a swelling effect like a crescendo and diminuendo. It's actually controlled by a foot pedal down here. All the swell pipes are enclosed in a box, a wooden box, and on the front of the box is a pair of, or a set of wooden shutters if you like, and the organist can open and close these shutters at will using this foot pedal down here. If I move the pedal back, that closes the shutters and softens the sound. If I push it forward, that opens the shutters and amplifies the sound. More about that later, but first of all, let's have a look at the stops on the swell. Now we have got a little flute here, a Ruhr flute, and there is no four foot flute to go with it. It's just a little eight foot on its own, but it sounds like this. And we also have two, I mentioned the dulciana on the choir, which is a string stop. We've got two lovely strings here on the swell. We have a viol celeste and an echo viol. And they sound like this. If I put a bit of pedal with it. In fact, these two string stops combine very well with the rural flute. some nice soft stops on the swell. We have a uh, lichen open diapason, we have a geigen diapason, which sounds like this. And we have a four foot geigen to go with it. So got a three rate mixture. So that's our swell chorus. Now we also have what we call super and sub octave couplers where we can actually get the whole piece of music to sound up the octave or down the octave or both together. So I'm going to use this swell chorus and first of all I'm going to demonstrate how it sounds with the sub octave coupler connected. And now with the super octave where it sounds up the octave and super. OK, 
Okay, so that's our swell chorus. We also have some reeds here on the swell, like we had the tuba on the choir and the great, we have some reeds. We have a nice little delicate oboe here. And we have a 16 foot walled horn. Again, 16 foot means it sounds below an octave, an octave below concert pitch. which is a bit more like a trumpet, a bit louder sound, a bit more full. Sorry about that. Shimana. Okay, so I mentioned earlier we have a swell pedal which we can control the volume. So I'm going to just demonstrate how that works. Again, I'll just put on full chorus on the swell. And, and it will, in fact, I'll leave off the pedals for the moment just so you can get the, an idea of how it sounds. And that's with the box open, but I'm going to gradually close the box. Open it again. And close. And open. So you can hear the swelling effect, that's where this manual gets its name. Okay, so that's each of the manuals um, shown individually. I'm not going to really worry about showing you the pedal because most of the pedal is extended off the manuals. There's only two pedal stops that are actually on their own. It's this big open bass. And also this little warden here, which you can barely hear. The rest of it is extended off the manuals, including this pedal trombone. Again, that's borrowed off the tuba. Now what you can do, you can also combine or couple manuals together. And the most common manuals that you couple together are the swell and the grate. So I'm just going to play again on the grate without... Um, I'll leave the pedals off again so to hear the effect. So you'll hear... So I'm just going to play the grate chorus up to four foot. And this is what it sounds like on its own. And now, again, I'm going to add the swell chorus up to four foot with it. And now 
I'll add the reed on the swell, the cornopian. <laughs> the swell and super octave couplers down onto the grate. So here is the same uh, chorale melody with the sub octave coupler from the swell. Now with the super octave with it. tuber in at the last minute. Okay, now another popular coupling, as well as the swell to the grate, is the swell down to the choir. So once again, here is the choir chorus. also bring the swell and super octave couplers down onto the choir. Here's the sub octave. <laughs> was known for was big sounds and these nice soft sounds as well but that is quite a lovely sound okay time for a piece of music this is one of my own compositions this is a piece of music I wrote when I gave a recital back in 2006 at St Mary's Radwinter in Essex and I wrote this voluntary for the occasion it's I've named it the Radwinter voluntary and it does work very well indeed on this organ so let me play you the Radwinter voluntary
Okay, well, thank you all. I hope you've enjoyed this video of the lovely Willis organ here at St John's Church in Sidcup. It's been my pleasure to show you the organ and what it's capable of. Just to finish off, I'll just play you a part of uh, probably one of the most well-known organ pieces ever written, the Toccata and Fugue in D minor. Supposedly, I say supposedly by the great Johann Sebastian Bach, but some music scholars believe it's actually not by Bach. They believe it's more likely to be by a chap called Johann Krebs, who was one of his students. But the jury is still out on that, and it's still, you know, generally accepted as a piece by Johann Sebastian Bach. So I won't play the fugue because it's a very long piece. I'm just going to play the Toccata and give you an idea of the big sound this organ can make. Thank you.